Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and share my slides and just give you an overview of um, the graduate studies in our department that are on offer. Um, so here we go. And just let me know in the chat, I guess, if there's any trouble hearing or seeing anything. So um, I have insulin 100 in, in the corner here as well, because um, our famous legacy is that the that insulin was discovered 100 years ago in the physiology department. So just to clarify why I have both logos there, um, that is why. So what is physiology is the first question. Um, uh oh, there we go. So physiology is the study of the biological processes that support life. It's a hugely broad topic, as I'm sure anyone who has taken a physiology course knows. Um, and so to break it down a little bit further, our department examines the interaction between factors that determine health and disease at the cellular tissue and whole organism levels. Um, and why would you study this? So um, one of the things that we uh, like to highlight is that um, having expertise in physiology really underpins possibilities for breakthroughs in many specialized areas of study. So like IMS, we have students all over the place, all sorts of different hospitals, um, CAMH, sick kids, um, the Ted Rogers Cardiac Center. So we have folks working in labs collaboratively um, and their research um, translates to uh, clinical applications quite readily. Um, and, and even it sort of an understanding of physiology under, underpins the more specialized um, areas that are that, you know, like biochemistry and stuff like that. A background in physiology is going to set you up for um, so many of those further specializations. Um, and as I mentioned, so we draw on our respected history to blaze trails in neuroscience, diabetes, reproductive and cardiac health. So that's just a quick overview of our four main platforms of research. Um, and all of those, you know, drill down into further stuff, diabetes and endocrinology. Sorry, there's a honking storm outside my window. I hope it's not too distracting. Um, so yeah diabetes and endocrinology, reproductive and human development. Um, those things are all, um, of course, they all intersect with each other as well. Um, and as I say, we draw on our respected history. Um, we have, we have a, a storied history um, with insulin being, you know, the sort of jewel in the crown. Um, what do we offer? So we offer two streams of graduate study. Um, we have a research stream, which is an MSc or, and or a PhD. And then we also have a professional master's, which is an MH, MHSC in medical physiology. So that's a brand new program. It's running for the first time this year. Um, students are really seeming to enjoy it. Um, so I'll tell you about that in a moment. So the research stream, um, this is a more um, classical research um, type of a program. So you're going to be working on your research project in a lab with a supervisor. So uh, pick one of our world-class faculty. Um, and ooh, it usually takes about two years to complete and it culminates with a thesis defense. So um, pretty traditional style. We don't have a rotation system. Um, we do we don't expect you to have a supervisor when you apply, but you will need to secure one before you can start the program. And of course, the sooner you can secure one, the better. If you can put in your application that you're already in talks with one or more people um, to supervise your work, uh, that, that can only serve you um, in your application quest. Um, oops, I did it twice. Do I need a supervisor for the MSc? I just answered this question, sorry. Um, yeah, we do recommend that you start looking now. So a good way to do that is to go to our website and just start scrolling through um, the faculty directory, see who's doing work that's up your alley um, and see, you know, like how might I reach out to this person? How might I position myself um, to look like a good fit for their lab? 
Um, so that's a really quick nutshell of the MSC. And I'm trying to leave a lot of time for questions because I want to make sure that uh, I give you, you know, time to tell me what you want to know about physiology. So I'm going to move on now to the professional masters, um, the MHSC in medical physiology. Um, so this is a course based program that is 12 months in length. Um, and it's unique in that way. I don't think there's any other professional master's programs at U of T uh, that are that short. Um, so the core courses include big data analysis, professional development, collaboration and commercialization. Oh, and also medical physiology. I left that one out, sorry. And then you also get um, three electives so that uh, you can tailor the program to your specific interests. And this program culminates with a practicum in a government industry hospital or not-for-profit setting. So you're actually working um, within the field of your choosing. Um, and ideally you're paid for that placement as well. It's not a guarantee, but ideally. Um, so what is required? Um, we do require an A minus average in physiology um, in the last two years of study. Um, we do require that you've completed um, several relevant science courses. So biology, physiology, chemistry, physics, any sort of life science courses, um, we want to see a strong showing in those. And then we also are looking at two references. So academic references are preferred. So if you can get two professors to speak to your work and why you would be a good fit for our program in particular, that is ideal. Um, and then you'll be writing a statement of interest. So as I say, if you can include details about the supervisors you've already contacted, so much the better. And for the MHSC, if you can explain why it is that you want to do this program in specific, um, what you're looking for in a placement, that kind of thing, that's, that's wonderful. And then there is an interview component for the MHSC only. So the MSC, the acceptances um, are based on the references statement of interest and um, marks. And then for the MHSC, there's also an interview component. But of course, we look at um, all of our applications holistically. We want to see um, that you have a good, um, strong handle on all of those things. So um, I know that there is sometimes concern if your marks are a little bit off. I would recommend just um, contacting the graduate administrators in the department, letting us know the situation, and we can help you um, sort through whether an application is still a good idea. Um, so that's the, really the end. I would advise you, um, one of the best things I can suggest is, is to sign up for um, our, oops, oh no, sorry about that. Sign up for our um, future students mailing list. So to do that, you can copy down this link or I'll put it in the chat as well or you can email me here at this email address and let me know you'd like me to put it put you on the list. The reason I suggest that is because um, as these months go on leading up to um, our application deadlines, I will be sending reminders of those. So the MHSC is due January 15th. The MSC is due February 15th. Um, but if you sign up to that list, I'll be sending you regular updates, um, giving you a little bit more news about the department, um, things that are going on, give you a bit of a better overview of it, and, um, and just send you those detailed instructions on how best to apply and to position yourself. So I do recommend that. And other than that, um, let's uh, move on to questions if you'd like to. Yeah, just post your questions in the chat box. That'd be great. Yeah. Should I stop sharing now or I can keep sharing just in case people want the contact info? They can do that. I'll leave it there. But now I can't see the chat. How do I do this here? Uh oh. <laughs> just click on the chat, it'll pop up. <laughs> ah, there it is. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, on to physiology. Okay, 
From Lauren Levy. Okay, I'm just going to read these questions out loud and then answer them. Is that a reasonable way to do it? Yes. Um, okay, so Lauren asks, it's a new program. Is there any co-op or job placement component? How long does the placement last? So, um, so we have two, as I mentioned, but I'll reiterate, we have two streams. We have the research stream, which is age old. I mean, over a hundred years old. Um, so a very historically significant um, science department at U of T. Um, so that one's not brand new, but what is brand new is the professional master's program, the MHSC. And as I did mention, that does culminate in a placement. So um, it is for the full summer semester. I believe it's a minimum of 12, week, 12 weeks, the placement, but it can go longer than that, depending on the hiring organization. So that's something that you kind of work out um, and that our students right now are starting to navigate um, as they apply for their placements. Um, are the two letters of reference for the MHSC, for the MSC, or both? Also, are the letters supposed to be purely academic in nature or also from previous lab research supervisors? So that's a good question. Um, we require two references for either one of those programs. If you want to apply to both, you will have to apply separately. They are completely separate programs, um, separate reviewing people on the committees. So it's, it's completely separate. So for both of them, you'll want to tailor who you ask to be your references to the program you're applying for. So if, if you're applying for the MSC, that being a research program, you want to put your best research face forward. So perhaps a lab research supervisor would be a great um, reference to use. We do advise though, because it is an academic program, you want academic references wherever you can get them. So some folks just don't have two profs that spring to mind, so they will use a boss from work or something. And that's fine, but if possible, rack your brain, who can recommend you and really position you well for um, the physiology programs. Um, and let me know, ask, an, ask a follow-up question if I'm not answering well enough. Um, that's no problem for me. I have until, what time is it? Let me just do a time check here. 42, we have until okay. four. Okay, so we've got lots of time. So when is the intake period for the MHSC? So we're accepting um, our applications January 15th. Um, all documentation needs to be in by January 30th. And then we will start um, reviewing those, probably scheduling the interviews for the early spring. Um, and we will accept more applications on a rolling basis up until, um, I believe sometime in May, but we really do recommend that you get your application for that program in for the January deadline because we're going to start accepting. And so you don't like it's a small program. We only took 15 this year. We may up it a little bit um, this year, but you want to get those applications in and secure your spot um, ASAP. Um, so that is recommended. What sort of careers would the MHSC prepare us for? Yeah, great question. So um, as I say, this is the first year it's running, so I can't give you specifics of what those students have gone on to do quite yet. But um, what we are definitely imagining is that um, they might end up working, hopefully, places where they did their placements. So we're looking at biotech companies, not-for-profits, hospital settings, um, even research settings as well. Um, and we're, you know, you get some training in project management and we're really looking for folks who can work on a team and bring their science expertise to like a larger picture team. So like, you know, a, the big example that we use is let's say wearable devices, um, like a Fitbit or something like that. Um, these things are generating like a ton of data and there's this emerging need for folks who really understand that data in a healthcare context. So have the science knowledge to speak to that, but can also sort of participate and collaborate with the rest of the people, let's say um, in the biotech company where this thing has been invented or in um, 
you know, some kind of public health arm of government where, you know, we need to interpret what's going on here exactly from this big data set, that kind of thing. So I hope that that answers your question. Um, I, I'm looking forward to next year when I can give you some hardcore specifics, but, um, but that is what we're looking at. And also, um, I do know that, that many of our students are applying um, to medical school as well. So of course, that's another pathway. Um, you're, you'll be developing your, your skills in physiology um, one way or another. Um, what is the deadline for securing a supervisor? Is it possible that we may be accepted into the program prior to securing one, in which case our acceptance is made conditional on the fact that we will find one within a certain time frame? Yes. So it, you totally don't need one by the application deadline. That's okay if you don't. I just recommend at least starting that process now-ish. Um, and basically, yeah, I mean, you'll be accepted, but you're not able to actually start the program until you have that supervisor um, secured. So I, I think, I don't know what the, like if there's an actual cutoff date or how that works, um, but I can, what I can do, if you have any questions about specific stuff for the MSC, reach out to Rosalie. Um, she is the admissions expert for the MSC. I am more the admissions expert for the MHSC. And you can also reach me here. Oh, I already put that on the screen, but maybe it's easier to cut and paste from the chat. I don't know. Is that true? Um, yeah, I guess so. I think so, right? Actually, I'm going to put my, um, uh, while we're at it, um, so folks can cut and paste the link as well to sign up for the, um, for the mailing list, just so that that is done with. Um, and back to the chat here. Um, acquiring a supervisor, we did that one. I know the program has direct entry PhD stream. If I'm interested in both MSC and PhD direct, do I need to submit two applications? Um, hmm. So I feel like you would want to choose one or the other. Like, um, I'm not sure I totally understand that question. Like, you're not sure yet if you want to just do an MSC or if you want to go straight and do the full thing. Is that what you mean? Because the PhD direct entry is like based on a very, like based on permission from the graduate committee. You have to have like a super strong application and reason to do that. So um, you would need to be pretty solid in your decision that that's what you want to do. Um, anyway, ask me a follow up if I haven't answered your question or email me directly and I can direct you to the right person to ask more questions about that as well. Um, so Lauren asks, does this program teach relevant data analysis and data science methods? Yes, so, um, so big data analysis is one of the core courses of the MHSC. I'm assuming you're speaking about the MHSC. Um, and if folks in the research stream are interested in that too, we do open up a few spots in that course um, for them as well. So it's an option if you're, if you're interested in data analysis specifically, either program, um, we, do, we have an expert in that who teaches it, um, Professor Cox. And I understand that it's super hard, but super interesting. And I'm not a scientist myself, so I can't tell you quite any more about that, but um, if you, again, if you have any other questions, I can always field them and pass them on to the right person within our department if you want more detail um, regarding the science. And we are having, that's right, we're having an info session for um, the MHSC as well. So that's upcoming. Um, I do believe that GLSC is, is promoting that for us. So perhaps you've received an email about it. Um, if not, I will be sending the invitation through the mailing list I mentioned. So please do feel free to subscribe and you can come to that. Our program director will be there. She can answer um, more nitty gritty questions regarding the MHSC 
and how it's been rolling out this year. Um, Bianca has a follow-up question um, on the reference letters. I currently have three referees in mind, one with whom I took a research course, so she can speak about my academics and research. Another one who I only took an academic course with, so only has academic things to say. And lastly, one with whom I purely did just research and so can only speak about my lab work. Out of those three, which might be preferable to choose? Okay, let me review that again. Um, so one can speak about academics and research. So I would say ding, 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 that one for sure. And then you have one who did an academic course and one just research. Bianca, I'm going to assume you're talking about the research stream program here because of the emphasis on research. So, I mean, honestly, I would say it depends. It depends on your relationship with these folks and who do you think is going to like position you best for what it is that you want to do. It's hard to say. It sounds to me like either one of those would be good choices. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you have the one person already who can highlight the research, yeah, I would say it really depends who you think is going to give you that stellar letter. Um, okay. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad that your question was answered, Tabina. And yes, those are my own links. Um, Lauren asks, are research students guaranteed TA positions or stipends? Research students are guaranteed a stipend. Um, if you go to our website, there is a write-up on um, what each person will do um, or will receive in terms of a stipend. I don't think it's a guaranteed TA position um, in addition to that, but I know that lots of our students do work as TAs as well. Just um, it's, not, it's not a given. Um, I want to do direct entry PhD, but I would still be wanting to be considered for MSc if they, oh, I see, I see. One application, if they give notice to the department. You know what, that is a good question. I haven't been asked that question before. So that's one for Rosalie, to be honest, um, that she, she can get into the nitty gritty of how the direct entry works. It seems to me what you're saying makes sense, like that we would consider you for both. Um, if you go for the direct entry, but I would definitely um, like make rock solidly sure with her if that's all right, if I forward you on to her. Um, you're welcome, Bianca. I'm glad that answered your question. Okay, awesome, Daria, that's great. Um, if students earn scholarships, does it supplement the stipend or does it reduce the stipend? Boy, you guys are coming with the, the tough questions today, I have to tell you. Um, I've done it several fairs where um, it hasn't been quite as nitty gritty. So I have to say I don't know for certain, but I do believe um, that it will supplement the stipend. But you know what, I'm going to look into that. I can email you if, you if you pop your email in there or send me an email, I can answer your question for you. Um, that is no problem. Bianca, another question, if you don't mind. Of course I don't mind. That is what I'm here for. Could you discuss what types of information you are looking for when reading letters of intent? Yes, good question. So, um, I mean, really just, like, think of it as sort of, um, a cover letter for why you are the person for the job. You know what I mean? So for the MSC, um, you know, we want to see passion for research specifically. We're a basic science program. It's research. So why do you want to do this? What field of study are you particularly interested in, in terms of physiology and why? Um, you know, what do you bring like sort of outside of your academic prowess? Are you a team player? You know, um, are you gonna be like somebody who um, wants to contribute to the like vibrant vibe of the department? I, yeah, I should add to that too. I know IMS highlighted that um, they have a really great uh, student association as do we, GASP, they are amazing. Um, they just organized an amazing research symposium. They do, um, 
in regular times, pub nights and things like that all the time. They've uh, they've created a really great Discord community um, for our students this year um, in the absence of in-person hangouts. So um, yeah, we have a really great student life um, presence as well. So um, that just reminded me. But yeah, I would just um, definitely speak to you know, first and foremostly, why are you going to be an amazing researcher with us? And secondly, just what else do you bring to the table? Um, and just, you know, make sure that you work on it as if it were an essay. <coughs> and then, um, hmm, that's a good question, Lauren. I've been told by professors that they only care about research experience. Well, I'll tell you from the MHSC perspective, I know, I know that we're looking for more than that. Um, we're looking for, you know, some well-roundedness as a human being and, um, and that sort of thing. But you know what? I will double check with the research folks and make sure I'm not saying the wrong thing there. As far as I know, it can only be an asset. When is the MHSC info session? Um, the in info session is November 16th. Let me get you guys a link for that. If you like, probably helpful. <laughs> Oh. Into the chat she goes. Huh, this is very interesting. So Bianca would also like to know about Lauren's question, how to discuss non-academic qualities and experiences. So yeah, I think um, I think that's a really good question because I know, I mean, as I say, I'm the graduate administrator for the MHSC. And I don't, I don't think we're advising to like spend, you know, several paragraphs on that kind of thing in your letter of intent. Just, um, yeah, highlighting why you would be an asset to the department, um, you know, with, with a line or two about that sort of stuff. Um, but let me get back to you guys. Here's, what is the best way to do this? I would say, if you wanna know more about that, why don't you shoot me an email? Um, I'll put my email one more time here, just so that you have it handy dandy. And I will make sure that I reach out to the right folks and get you a proper answer on that. That isn't just MHSC based. Because I do not want to lead anyone astray. Any other questions? These are awesome questions. I'm looking forward to digging into them all and learning more myself. Hi, Natasha. Hello, are you giving there, a hug? If there's no other questions, uh, do you have anything else to add? I'll just stop recording. You're good? I don't think I have anything else. Thanks everyone for coming. Thanks okay. for having us, GLSE. You're welcome.